Welcome to Montalcino in Tuscany, a little village on a shiny hill. It's the home of Brunello di Montalcino, one of the most fascinating red wines in the world. Here, an Italian grape called Sangiovese is the law of the land. And while it's grown throughout Italy, in Montalcino, it turns into a grape of the gods. So let's take a closer look at the Tuscan wines of Montalcino. I'm Tony Margiata, and you're watching Italy's Best Kept Wine Secrets. Tuscany is one of Italy's most infamous regions. Located in the northern part of the Italian peninsula, Tuscany has a long border on the Tyrrhenian Sea coastline, and its southern section is a short ride from Rome. The region contains many historical cities, such as Firenze, Siena, and Pisa. Tuscany is known for its landscapes, art, and influence on high culture. The foundation of the Italian language is credited to the Tuscans by way of Dante Alighieri. The name Tuscany traces its lineage to the ancient people who inhabited the area some 3,000 years ago, the Etruscans. In fact, Toscana is named after the Etruscans, and while the Romans would later conquer the Etruscans, their cultural influence is demonstrated in modern-day Italy. Many ancient Roman cities were actually named after Etruscan cities. Some historians believe the Etruscans helped construct urban parts of ancient Rome and even drainage systems. But the Etruscans were ruled by Rome for many centuries until they merged with the Romans and disappeared from history. It appears the Etruscans cultivated vines as far back as the Bronze Age some 3,300 years ago. The cultivated vines were wild grape varieties at that time, and they would let them grow in their natural habitat. Oftentimes, the vines were growing in forests, and they would grow up the trunks and branches of trees in order to find light. Today, they would be called married vines, which can still be found in places like Caserta in the Campania region which was an Etruscan stronghold at one time. Since viticulture was not yet a specialized craft, the vines would also grow in the middle of other crops, such as cereals, fruits, and olives. It's believed that the Etruscans passed on the culture of grapevine and wine to the Romans. While the Greeks teaching the Romans how to make wine over 2,000 years ago, is the established theory, and their influence on the Romans cannot be denied, there is still a missing piece to the story. There are no written records of the Etruscan winemaking systems, but we can still refer to the most ancient Roman testimonies, since it was the Etruscans who taught the Romans how to make wine. How do we really know this? The answer might surprise you. 
It hides within the tomb of an Egyptian mummy. In Latin, the word for wine is vinum, or vinum, in Julius Caesar's Latin. But where does the word vinum come from? Does the word even originate from Latin? The word vinum is taken from the ninth fragment of the Liber Linteus, from the 3rd century BC, known as the Linen Book, also called the Book of the Zagreb Mummy, one of the oldest books in Europe. It's actually an Etruscan religious text that describes ceremonies and rituals. It's the only book of this people that has come down to us because it seems they used perishable material, such as linen. For this reason, very few texts of a certain length have come down to us. The incredible preservation of the Liber Linteus over time happened by chance. This book likely arrived in Egypt and in the wake of Etruscan travelers. Somehow, it ended up in the hands of the locals who, not understanding it, used mummy linens to make bandages so that it could be covered up and protected. In this way, they allowed the preservation of a precious document through the centuries. In 1848, a Croatian bought this mummy in Egypt and took it to the Zagreb Museum in Croatia. When the scholars unwound the bandages, they realized that they carried a text inside written in a language that was not ancient Egyptian. After a thousand conjectures, in 1892, the Egyptologist Jacob Kroll proved that the mysterious language was none other than Etruscan. This book became one of the most studied texts to understand the language of this ancient people. And this group of letters at the top was found in this document. The group of letters above is the Etruscan word for venum. And since most written records of the Etruscan language no longer exist, this is the only ancient document we have. From this, we can also infer that venum is actually Etruscan. Thus, the word wine was invented by the Etruscans and likely originates from Tuscany. It was later passed on to Latin and to modern European languages. And because of this one ancient document preserved inside the bandages of a mummy in Egypt, we know the Etruscans influenced the wine culture of the Romans and beyond. Now let's fast forward a few thousand years. Today, Tuscany is also a powerhouse region when it comes to wine. Some of the most famous Italian wines in the world, like Chianti, Vino Nobile di Montepulciano, and Brunello di Montalcino, all come from Tuscany. While these three completely different wines come from different areas of Tuscany, the one trait they all share is that they are predominantly made with the Sangiovese grape. On my trip to Tuscany, I was specifically going to a little village called Montalcino, which was likely an Etruscan settlement. Now, Montalcino is probably the most world-renowned place for wine in Italy, and its best wines sit on the throne of the world's greatest wines. The main wine produced there is called Brunello di Montalcino. Brunello is what the locals call Sangiovese, and so the wine's name literally means the Sangiovese wine from Montalcino. And as you'll discover later, there's a reason for the name distinction. So I decided to take a trip to Montalcino to see what else could be learned that the mainstream storylines never tell us. Montalcino is a small mountain village in southern Tuscany. There are two opposing theories about what the name Montalcino means. Some say it means mountain of light, 
while others believe it means mountain of oak, referring to the plethora of oak trees found on the mountain. Ancient words oftentimes have dual meanings. On this sunny mountain, Montalcino has vineyards as low as 150 meters and as high as 650 meters. That's a very wide range for vineyards, which means that the wines will vary greatly. This creates a dilemma because when you buy a Brunello di Montalcino, there are certain expectations in quality and style. But in reality, from one vineyard to the next, depending on the elevation, slope, and winemaker, the coveted Brunello di Montalcino can drastically differ. The Brunello di Montalcino territory resembles a square, with its borders being determined by three rivers. Orcia, Asso, and Ombrone. These rivers prevent this coveted appellation from corrupting itself by expanding into wider territories that would cause this wine's identity to be lost. I had been on the hunt for red gold in Montalcino for many years without even realizing it until I discovered something important. Sometimes we look for the wrong things, and in the process we stumble upon unexpected treasure. Red gold was not the color of the wine. It was where the wine came from. I spent five years searching for a standout Brunello winemaker, and I finally came across an artisan who has dedicated her life to crafting Brunellos that make a statement. Her name is Clara di Monaci. Her grandparents purchased the Pian Cornello farm in 1943, just after the Second World War. At that time, many small farmers cultivated Brunello grapes and sold them to the large wine houses for commercial export. At that time, Brunello di Montalcino was far away from its eventual world-class status. Eventually, the Pian Cornello farm was passed down to Clara and her brother, but they decided to split it into two separate estates. Clara named her estate Corte dei Venti, which means Court of the Winds, and there's a reason behind that. Corte dei Venti is very much a hidden gem in Montalcino. You would never find the estate unless you were searching for it, otherwise you would get lost and that's because of its hidden location. Most of the touristic traffic goes upwards on this road towards the historic city center. But I found this sign and it grabbed my attention. It said, the heroic Montalcino. This is the most southern section of the Brunello di Montalcino appellation. And you have to travel on a long and curvy dirt road to find the Corte de Venti estate. The vineyards are located on the southernmost edge of the Appalachian at 1,000 feet above sea level in the heroic south of Montalcino. Below the vineyards, you'll find the Orcha River, which is connected to the Tyrrhenian Sea. The river acts as a channel, transporting the mineral-rich sea winds to the vineyards. When you go to these vineyards, you'll see the canopies are shaking 24 hours a day from those sea winds. There are two unique benefits of this natural phenomenon. One is the winds prevent insects from infiltrating the vineyards. This is a vintner's dream because Clara doesn't use any pesticides. The grapes are clean. In fact, we were eating the grapes right off the vine. Buono. Sì? Davvero, dolcissimo. Fa, fammi assaggiare. <ride> no, qui ci ho messo la bocca, dai. Eh, uno, eh. poco a poco, faccio io. Mm. Anthony, a te. Dieci giorni. A Grazie. Buono, però. C'è ancora un pizzico di acidità al nostro caffè. Sì, ha uh, uh, ancora la buccia dura. No. Diventa più morbida tra qualche settimana? Sì? Ah. Però già ora a me piace. Mangiarla così, certo, con il vino no. 
The second benefit of the winds is that they add a detail of minerality both in the aromatics and flavors in the wine. If you read about Brunello di Montalcino, the last word used to describe this wine would be minerality. And yet her wines have this distinctive minerality that I describe as river mist, which makes the Corte de Venti Brunello di Montalcino unique and terroir driven. When you arrive at the Corte de Venti estate, one of the first things you'll see is what looks like a red tombstone, a coarse red rock with orange hues. This rock is what the Corte de Venti soils are made of. The red color comes from the rich iron content found in the soil. This rare soil, which is both iron and calcareous, produces fuller bodied brunellos with penetrating pigments, powerful aromatics, and detailed complexity in the wines. These qualities are what the international wine scene are seeking in wines today. Iron-rich soil is not common in Montalcino. In fact, it's only found in the southern section of Montalcino, and not every vineyard has it. In fact, on the other side of the Orcha River, in the Marema subzone, the soils are completely different. Today, these lands of red gold are priceless. Cosa è questo? Questo è il nostro terreno dei nostri vigneti qui a Montalcino. Siamo a sud di Montalcino, nella zona delle terre rosse. Talmente rosse che sono, come puoi vedere, sembra di essere in un campo da tennis. Ah. Eh, il terreno è un'argilla appunto eh, ferrosa, ciottolosa e mh, piove poco, ma quel poco che piove incamera talmente tanta acqua che anche nel periodo estivo, anche con estrema siccità, ancora non abbiamo problematiche. Insomma, sì, abbiamo delle sofferenze, ma non sofferenze da perdere i prodotti. Ecco. Eh. Come influenza il risultato del vino? Questo lo lascio sempre dire a chi lo assaggia. Eh, sì. <ride> Io mi produco il prodotto, sì. me lo eh, assoggetto al mio palato, Sì. Ma io non posso dire che il mio vino è ottimo e sì, sì, sì. lo lascio sempre dire a chi lo assaggia. Sì, e sì. Anzi, rispetto l'opinione altrui e cerchiamo di lavorare possibilmente al meglio che si può per dare sempre il miglior prodotto e la migliore qualità. The Brunello grapes are harvested by hand in early September. The wine ages in large Slavonian oak barrels. While French oak is commonly used for its sweeter vanilla-like flavors, Slavonian oak is neutral. So in Montalcino, you'll find some estates that use one or the other. Besides Brunello di Montalcino, there was another red wine in the region called Rosso di Montalcino. This is the younger version of Brunello. The production of a young red wine has been present in the Montalcino area for at least 200 years. Over time, this wine had various names and played an important role in the territory of Montalcino. Information is known about a wine called Vermiglio, a generic name for red wine from centuries ago, and it was made to be consumed in a short time due to its freshness and fragrance characteristics. In the second part of the 19th century, there was the production of a wine defined as Rosso, and one of them was awarded a bronze medal in 1869. As part of the exhibition of typical Sienese wines held in Siena in 1932, 1933, and 1935, 
Rosso wines from Montalcino were presented. In the 1960s, it was decided to include this wine within a denomination of origin, and the first idea was to classify this wine as Rosso dai Vignetti di Brunello, red wine from the Brunello vineyards. Subsequently, the wine was designated as Rosso di Montalcino, a name that linked the wine with its origin. Rosso di Montalcino is appreciated for its fragrance and freshness given by the primary fruit aromas and secondary aromas coming from the fermentation. It has a wider audience because of its affordable price and ease with wine and food pairings. Depending on the style of the winemaker, it's possible to find simple and young red wines or more structured and complex red ones. The wine must be made with 100% Sangiovese. The grapes must be grown in Montalcino and the wine must be bottled there. Rosso di Montalcino must age a minimum of one year before released for consumption. In the case of Corte de Venti, Clara uses the same Sangiovese grapes for both her Rosso and Brunello di Montalcino. The only difference is she ages the Rosso di Montalcino for one year in large Slavonian oak barrels, followed by another year in the bottle before releasing it to the public. In this case, you are getting a young Brunello under the Rosso di Montalcino name. A quality Rosso that rivals many of the Brunellos made by the big wine houses making this wine a hidden gem full of quality grapes. Clara produces about 7,000 bottles of Rosso di Montalcino per annum, depending on the climate. And once the Rosso di Montalcino leaves its barrels, the remainder of the Sangiovese production will stay in barrel so that it can become a Brunello di Montalcino. The Rosso has a freshness to it that makes it very refreshing and a very interesting sensorial experience. The bright red fruits are mature and mouth-watering, but there's so much more to it than that. The wine is complex with cherry, fresh roses, black truffle, and a minerality that you'll never find in any other Rosso di Montalcino. The finish is classic Italian, dry, savory, and decisive. But beyond flavor, this wine has a distinguished aroma and taste that stands apart from the typical Rosso di Montalcino. When you enter the Corta de Venti vineyards during the sunset, the angle of the light shows off the brilliant redness of the land and you'll feel like you're floating over an oasis of red gold. This phenomenon makes the vineyards feel bigger than they are. Since Clara has focused on terroir expression of Brunello di Montalcino, the vineyards yield about 60 quintals per hectare of Brunello grapes, while the DOCG discipline allows for up to 80. And while 80 is a respectable yield for this grand wine, Going down to 60 allows for a microscopic taste of terroir detail. After a hand harvest, the Brunello di Montalcino undergoes malolactic fermentation followed by decanting in steel vats during the winter months. This softens the wine and gives a round mouthfeel. The Brunello di Montalcino then ages in large Slavonian oak barrels that are 20 to 25 hectoliters for about 36 months. The wine is then transferred to glass bottle and rests in the estate cellar for one more year giving four years of total aging before releasing for consumption. The large Slovenian oak allows a neutral environment so the wine can age and refine the finite details. The classic sour cherry notes 
of the Brunello are brilliant. In the backdrop, you'll smell and taste red floral notes like dried rose petals, a touch of pepper for pizzazz, and a complex finish comprised of more cherry, black truffle, and a fresh minerality. The wine has an intensity to it, but totally in control of itself, full-bodied without feeling heavy, with a balanced structure. Even at a young age, the wine has very refined tannins, making it a sophisticated tasting experience now, or if you decide to age the wine in your cellar. Around 10,000 bottles are handcrafted per annum. The Corte de Venti Brunello di Montalcino can easily age a minimum of 15 years, and the best vintages can go the long haul for 30 years. Decanting the wine at least two hours before serving will really open up this wine and show its maximum expression. For only the absolute best vintages, Corta de Venti will make a Brunello di Montalcino Reserva. Clara nicknamed the bottle Dona Elena, meaning Lady Elena, which is named after her daughter. Produced at a very limited 1,000 bottles, the Reserva is made from a small batch of the finest Brunello grapes from the best vintages. The wine ages 48 months in large Slavonian oak casks, followed by one year in glass bottle before releasing for consumption, making it a total of five years of aging at the estate with the finest material from the finest years. The Dona Elena Reserva is a rare and full sensory experience. The wine can age up to 30 years. Powerful perfumes of sour cherry, dried roses, sweet spices, fine balsamic notes, and a savory summer truffle note, which takes your palate on a journey through the rustic hills of Mondalcino, Tuscany. Its massive body overwhelms the senses like a chiseled Roman statue. The mid palate continues to persist with size while expressing detail and a wave of epic proportions ensures a lasting impression. And while Brunello is the specialty of the Corte de Venti estate, there are two more wines that require your attention. In the vineyards, there's a small section dedicated to French grape varieties. It was discovered back in the 1970s by a small group of winemakers that French grapes developed very well in Tuscany. So they began blending their native Sangiovese with the now called international varieties. The wines achieved so much success that they were eventually called Super Tuscans. And while it's rare to find a Super Tuscan in Mondalcino, it could be argued that Corte de Venti makes two different types. The first one is a Toscana Rosso IGT called Le Terre Rosse, or the Red Lands, referring to the red golden soils. Le Terre Rosse is made of hand harvested, hand selected Brunello at 55%, and then 20% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Merlot, and a touch 5% of Syrah brilliantly blended into a masterful wine, aged in steel for 12 months, followed by a year in bottle before release. It's a hidden gem from Montalcino, and you get to experience a Super Tuscan blended with Brunello grapes. The wine is full-bodied with rich blackberry notes, cherry, sweet spices, and dark chocolate undertones encapsulated by silky smooth textures. Unlike Le Terra Rosse, which is classified as a regional Toscana Rosso, the second Super Tuscan has its own appellation. It's called Sant'Antimo DOC. Sant'Antimo Rosso DOC is produced in the area of Castelnuovo dell'Abate, a hamlet of Montalcino with an ancient winemaking tradition. It is named after the magnificent abbey of Sant'Antimo, which sits in a beautiful valley surrounded by vineyards. 
Created in the 1990s, this tiny and separate appellation is found mostly within the commune of Montalcino, and it was created for two reasons. One, it allowed vintners in Montalcino to experiment with the international varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, so they could make wines other than Rosso and Brunello di Montalcino. The second was that by designating Sant'Antimo as a denomination of origin, that vintners could make quality wines uniquely attached to the territory. It allows them to make blends of French and Tuscan varieties without being classified as table wine. Since the rules are very flexible for this DOC, quality could vary greatly, so the resulting wines are influenced by the style and taste of the winemaker. The Corte de Venti Sant'Antimo DOC is called Poggio de Lecce. It's a red blend of 60% Brunello, 20% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, and 10% Syrah. The wine ages for one year in small French barrique of 250 liters, followed by at least one year in glass bottle before releasing for consumption. The wine is round and warm, making it very inviting and very easy to drink. Its full body is both velvety and harmonic. There's strong ripe red fruit notes, but there's also a particular blackberry and black currant notes with decisive notes of sweet spices. A super Tuscan from a small corner in Montalcino, Poggio de Lecce reimagines the merging of native Italian and French grape varieties. Some might say the Sandantimo isn't a super Tuscan, which is perfectly fine. Super Tuscan, after all, is just a marketing term and not an actual wine type. Maybe they should call it a Super Brunello instead. Because of its red soils and vicinity to the Orcha River, the Corte de Venti estate creates some of the most recognizable wines in the Brunello di Montalcino world. The Corte de Venti Brunello di Montalcino and their entire wine portfolio full of masterful works will leave their mark in wine history, just as the Etruscans left behind their secrets so that we can taste Tuscany's everlasting gifts now and generations can enjoy for centuries to come. From red soils to red gold, Brunello di Montalcino is one of the finest wines in the world. Built on top of the Etruscan civilization, the mountain of hills called Montalcino will always continue to climb to new heights in the craft of wine. It's a special place where land, light, and life coalesce into one of the Earth's greatest pleasures. Until next time, I'm Tony Margiata, and I'll see you on the next episode of Italy's Best Kept Wine Secrets. Mm -hmm.